In this section, we are working on admin controller and we are providing admin feature to our web application. So I need to create admin controller. So I open controllers and I hit add controller and then I select API and API controller empty. Then I select add and in here I'm going to change the name to admin and I hit add. And we are going to authorize the whole controller for admin roles. So in order to do that, I can have authorize over here. And then inside parentheses, I can have roles. And then I can have admin over here. So we are authorizing this controller for admin role only. And no other role can access this controller. And then I'm going to have constructor. So I type CTOR and then I tap and inside here, I'm going to inject user manager and role manager. So I select user manager and the type is user. And for the user, I put control dot and I'm going to import from api.models. And I name it as user manager. Then I have comma and role manager. For the role manager, I have identity role. Then I name it as role manager. And then I initialize both of them. And after here, we are going to have the first endpoint. That endpoint is get members. So admin is capable of getting all the members. By the word of member, I mean the users that has been assigned to this web application. So we have HTTP get, and I give it a route of get dash members. And inside here, we have public async task of action result. And then we are going to return an I enumerable. So I select I enumerable. And then inside I enumerable, we have member view DTO. And then I give my method a name and I name it as get members. And I need to create member view DTO class into my DTOs folder. So I copy the name and then I open DTOs and I'm going to create another folder. And this folder is called admin. So that's the represent of our admin controller. And then inside admin, I'm going to create a class and I paste the name member view DTO and I hit add. And for member view DTO, we are going to have the following properties. So first of all, I have prop a string of ID. Since our ASP.NET users is using a string of ID, so we have a string of ID over here. And the next property is prop a string of username. And then we have a string of first name and we have a string of last name and we have public boo is locked and we have getter and setter and we have prop date time and the name is date created. So I type date created and finally we are going to have I enumerable of roles. So I have prop. And then inside here, I have I enumerable. So I select the second one, system.collection.generic. And then inside angle bracket, I have a string. And the name is roles. And after I finish with my member view DTO, I head back to admin controller. And then I can bring member view DTO. So I put control dot and I can have using API DTOs.admin. And inside here, we are going to fetch all the members and returning the members. So I have var members equals await. Then I have underscore user manager and I select users. So when I select users, we are going to call ASP.NET user table. And that represents, if I open database, is representing ASP.NET users. And then I can have dot where and we are going to return all the members except the super admin. So for our web application, we are going to have a super admin and we're not allowed to change our super admin because we need to have at least one super admin that he is capable of doing anything. So I'm going to have x goes to x dot username is not equals. And then if I open services, context seed service, I select no and then if I navigate down to my admin, and this is the email address and username for my super admin. So this is actually our super admin, and we're not allowed to change anything for our admin. 
and even we're not returning the super admin information to the get members endpoint so i copy this and then i head back to admin controller and we are going to check if username is not this one then we are going to project the result into a new list so i can select dot select so i have dot select and then for each member goes to new member view dto and then i have curly brace and inside here i can have id equals member dot id and then i can have username equals member dot username and first name equals member dot first name last name equals member dot last name and date created equals member dot date created and then i can have comma and for is locked I can make a use of user manager so I have equals underscore user manager dot is locked out async and we are going to pass the member so if I hover over this is expecting to receive a user so we are passing the member and then since we are making a call to async we have to have dot get a waiter and dot get result and for the roles I have equals user manager dot get roles async so if i hover over this is expecting to receive a user so i select the first one and then we are going to pass the member as well and then we are going to have get a waiter and dot get result and over here we have the two list async and i close it with a semicolon and then i'm going to return and OK response and I pass my members. So I would like to test my endpoint. I start my API application and I open Postman. And inside my identity app, I'm going to have a new folder. So I click on here and then I choose add folder and I name it as admin. And then inside my admin, I'm going to have my first request so I select add a request and for the name I have get members and for the URL I have URL forward slash API forward slash admin forward slash get dash members and we need to have authorization so I select authorization and I choose bearer token and JWT over here and I can save this request to my collection. And we need to log in as admin. So I open login and then I'm going to log in as admin. So I have been logged in as admin. Then I can select get members and I can hit send. And as soon as I hit send, then I get a result. And this is all the result except the admin user. So I can see VIP player player manager and that's it so we don't see the admin because we have a condition in our work class so if i open admin controller we have a condition so give me all the user except the username is not equal to this one and then we are going to select so this select is a projection so if i comment above this this is a projection so we are going to project the ASP.NET user into the following class and if you are familiar with mapper then this is basically like a mapper so for each result we have called it as a member and for each member we are going to project it into a new class or basically a new type and the type is member view DTO and then inside curly brace we are going to set the ID equals member dot ID so if I hover over member I can see this is the type of user but we are going to return as a list of member view DTO so if I hover over my members this is what we are returning and if I see I can see this is a list of member view DTO but my member is type of model dot user and for this model we are going to project into the following class type that's why I have used from dot select and that is doing that job and for each member we are setting the id to member.id username first name last name date created 
all of these are coming from the member and for is locked we are going to check if the user is locked or not so we are going to make a use of user manager and is locked out gives me so this returns a flag indicating whether the specified user is locked out as an asynchronous operation so this gives me either true or false for this boolean and since we are making use of async, we have to have get awaited and get result. And for the roles, we are going to make a use of user manager once again. And we are going to call get roles async. And then if I hover over, then I can see this gets a list of role names to the specified user. So this method is giving me all the roles for this member. And since we are making a async call, then we need to have get awaited and get result. And finally, we are returning to list async, and then we are going to return the members. So if I open my database and open ASP.NET user, so that is locked out method is basically checking if the lock out end daytime is greater than daytime dot now. So whenever a user is locked out, this column will be populated, and this is a daytime type and if the daytime type of this lockout is greater than time now then that means the user is locked out okay the next endpoint that we are going to have is the ability to lock the member so after my get members i'm going to have my second endpoint so we have http put since we are modifying to a existing record that's why i am selecting http put in order to compile the restful api architecture so i select http put and then inside the route i'm going to have lock dash member and we are expecting to receive an id so i have carry brace and id over here then i'm going to have public async ask and since we're not returning anything i have i action result and then I name it lock member. And inside parentheses, I'm going to receive a string of ID. And this ID is representing the ID of the user. And then I open and close curly brace. Then I'm going to fetch the users. So I have var user is await underscore user manager dot find by ID async. And then we can pass the ID. So we are going to find the user by the ID. And then we can have a quick check if user is now then we can return not found and as i mentioned that we're not letting to change anything with admin so we have to have a private helper method and that returns if the user id is admin so after my http put i can have private bool and i can name it as is admin user id and we are receiving a string of user id and then inside my private i'm going to have return underscore user manager dot find by id async then i can pass the user id and then since we are making a call to async we have to have get awaiter and then dot get result and after here we can have dot username dot equals and the email address of the admin if this is equal to the email address of the admin, then we are returning true. And that is true because the user ID belongs to the admin. So I can put the email address of the admin into my st.cs. So if I open st.cs, then after player, I can have, and I name it as admin username. And the username is admin at example.com. And I can copy this sc.admin user all over places that I'm using the admin username. So first of all, I can copy this and I paste it into context seed service. So if I open context seed service, then instead of hard coding the username for admin, I can have sd.admin username. And also for the email, we can have sd.admin username. And we know that the admin username is admin at example.com. And then I can head back to my admin controller. And if I scroll to the top, and from here, I can have sc.admin username. So if the username is not to the admin username from get members. And if I scroll down and for my is admin user ID, then 
for here we can have if the username equals to sd.admin username and if the username is admin username then we are returning true from this helper method and we can make a use of inside our lock member so after if user is null then i can have if is admin user id and i can pass the id if that's true then i can return a bad request and for the message i can say super admin change is not allowed and we are going to make a use of that text message from multiple places so instead of hard coding that i can type it once inside my sc.cs so i open sc.cs and after admin example.com i can have public const string and i name it as super admin change not allow equals i can say super and i can have a question mark and then i close it with the semicolon so i copy this variable and then i head back to admin controller and inside my bad request i can have sc dot super admin change not allowed and then i can put a semicolon at the end so with this line of code if the id is being passed to this lock member and if the id belongs to the admin then we're returning a bad request and we're not locking the admin user account so we can only lock any other member except the super admin and finally we are going to perform to lock out the user so i put enter and then i have await underscore user manager dot set lock out end so i can select set lock out end date async and then this is expecting to receive a user and a date time so i'm passing the user and as the date time how many days we are going to lock the user so can have date time dot so i need to bring date time from using system and then we can have utc now then add days and we are going to lock the user for five days and i put a semicolon then i can return a no content which is a 204 a status message and that is a success message basically and i'm going to test this endpoint so i start the api application then i open postman and I'm going to have another request. So I select add request. And for the name, we can have lock member. And we can tell that this is expecting to receive an ID. And inside my URL, I have URL forward slash API forward slash admin forward slash lock dash member. And then we have forward slash and we have to pass the ID. And since it is a put request, then I choose put from here and i have to select authorization and i select bearer token so make sure you are selecting that as well and then i can save it to my collection so i'm going to open get members once again and we are going to try to lock vip player so i copy this and i head back to lock member and i paste it over here and then i can send and I have received 204 no content. So that means the VIP player has been locked. So if I open my database and if I execute, then for my VIP player, which is the first one, if I scroll to the right, I can see lock out end. So this column has been populated with a date time. And that datum is five days from today. So if I try to login with vip player so i can copy the username and then i head back to postman and I, if i click on login and instead of admin i'm going to have that vip player and if i try to send then i can see invalid username or password that is because we have to make some modification inside our login method as well so we can have the modification so i'm going to open the visual studio and i stop the application and i can navigate to account controller and then i'm going to find login endpoint and after i'm checking for the password then i'm going to have another check so i can put enter and inside here i can have if result dot is locked out if the result is locked out, then we can return an authorize. And inside the message, we can have a string.format. And inside my string.format, I can have your account.
So for the message I can have, your account has been logged. You should wait until the time, UTC time, to be able to log in. And after my quotation, I can have a comma and I can pass user.logout end. So this is an date time and then I can close it with a semicolon. So this time I'm going to put a breakpoint and let's see what happens. So I start my API application and then I'm going to log in with VIP player once again, since this is a locked account. So if I send, then I can step over. And so this has found the user and then the email is confirmed. And then we are going to check the password if I step over. So if I hover over result, I can see succeeded is false and is locked out is true. So we are going to come to this if statement. So if I step over, then we are going to come to this if statement. And if I continue, then I can see another message. So your account has been locked. You should wait until this time in order to be able to log in. And that's exactly what we wanted to show to the client rather than saying incorrect username or password. So let's handle unlocking the user. I open Visual Studio and then I stop the application and I can remove my breakpoint from logging. Then I can navigate to admin controller and I'm going to have another endpoint. So I have HTTP boot and then I can give it a route and I name it as unlock member. And we are expecting to receive an ID. So I specify that over here. Then we can have public async task of I action result. And then I name it as unlock member. And then we are receiving an ID. So I can borrow some code. So I copy this line of codes and I paste it over here. So we are fetching the user by the ID. And if the user is null, then return not found. If the user is admin, then return a bad request. And otherwise, we are going to unlock the user. So in order to perform unlocking the user, we have to set, if I open my database, we have to set this property to null, the same as the rest of the user accounts that we have over here. So in order to do that, I minimize this, then we can have a wait user manager dot set lock out end. So I can have set lock out end date. And then we are going to pass the user and we can pass a date time or null. So I'm going to pass null value in order to assign that property into null. And then we are going to return no content once again. So I would like to test this endpoint. I start the API application and then I head back to Postman and I can duplicate my lock member. So I select duplicate from here and then for the name, we can have unlock the member. So I correct the name and I can get rid of copy. And for the route, we can have unlock. And we are going to pass the user ID and make sure authorization bearer token is over here. So I'm going to paste the user ID that I have locked. So if I open get members and this is the user ID that I have locked. So I copy this. And then I'm going to paste it over here. So after forward slash, I'm going to paste. And once I send, then I can see no content. So that means the user has been unlocked. So if I open my database and if I execute, then if I scroll to the right, then I can see this has been null once again. And that means I can try to log in with my VIP player. So if I copy the username and I head back to Postman and for my login, I'm going to log in as that VIP player. So I can send and then I can see the result. And now I can successfully log in with VIP player since the user has been unlocked. And I'm going to save all these requests to my collection. So in order to get rid of this orange light bulb. So if I save, then I can see the orange light bulb is gone. Okay, the next endpoint that we are going to work on is delete member. So I'm going to open my Visual Studio and I stop the application. 
and then after my unlock member i'm going to have another endpoint and we are going to delete a member so i have http delete and inside the route i can have delete dash member and i'm going to receive the id and then i can have public async task of i action result and we can name it as delete member and we are receiving an id and then inside my endpoint i can borrow this code once again so i paste it over here we are fetching the user and checking if the user is not admin and then if everything is okay up to this point then we are going to have await user manager dot delete async and this delete async is going to delete the user from the backing store so i select delete async and we are going to pass the user and then we can have return no content once again so i'm going to test this endpoint i'm going to run my api project and i'm going to open my postman then i can create another request or i can duplicate from one above so i can duplicate unlock member and for this request i can name it as delete member and i can get rid of copy and we are going to select http delete so make sure you're selecting http delete and for the route we have delete member and then i can save this request into my collection and if i send then i can see 403 forbidden that's because we have been logged in with the vip player so i need to log in as the admin so i can click on login and then we are going to log in as admin so i can have admin at example.com so if i send then we are going to save this token to our jwt and i can open delete member and that token has been saved inside our authorization jwt so right now i can hit send and if i hit send then i can see 204 no content that means this member has been deleted so i can verify it by opening my sql and if i execute then i can see vip player has been removed from my users then i'm going to open my visual studio then i'm going to add another endpoint for the admin in order to get all the available application roles so i stop my api project and just after my delete i'm going to have http get and i give it a name of get application dash roles and then i can have public async task of action result and then this is returning a string array so i can have a string array over here and i can name it as get application roles and inside my endpoint i can have return okay await underscore role manager dot roles we are going to call roles and this roles is representing if i open my database is representing spnet roles and if i select a thousand then we are having three roles inside our application so i'm going to navigate back and inside my roles then i can only select the name so after roles i can have select then can have x goes to x then x dot name and after the closing parenthesis i can have dot to list async and i can have open and close parenthesis and i can close it with a semicolon so basically i'm going to call role manager and from role manager i'm going to call the roles table and this is aspnet roles as i showed you inside my database and we are going to select only the name because we are interested only in the name and then we are calling to list async and that returns a list of all available roles inside our ASP.NET user table so i can test this endpoint i start the application then i'm going to open my postman and i'm going to create another request so i can make a copy of get members so i select duplicate from get members and then for the route i can have get application dash roles and for the name i can have get application and i get rid of copy and instead i can have roles and we are going to have authorization bearer token as well so i save this get application roles and if i send 
then I can see manager player and admin as a return value from this endpoint. And we are going to make a use of these roles inside our Angular application. But for now, we are completing the functionality of admin controller. And the next task is to, if the admin decides to edit or create a member. So for now, we are working on editing a member. If the admin decides to edit a member, then he has to receive some information in order to be able to edit that member. So that information is going to be called get member. So I can create that endpoint by opening my Visual Studio and then I can stop the application and I scroll to the top and just right after get members, we are going to have another endpoint and that is called get member. So I have HTTP get and as a route, we have get dash member and we are receiving ID from the user ID. And for the name, we can have public async task and we are returning action result and we are returning member at edit DTO, member at edit DTO. And I name this endpoint as get member and we are receiving an ID inside here. So I open and close the curly brace and we are going to create member at edit DTO inside our admin details. So I copy the name and inside details and inside admin folder, I'm going to have another class and I name it as member at edit DTO. And some of the properties are the same as member view DTO. So I open member view DTO and I can copy the first four and then I head back to member at edit DTO and I paste it over here. And after last name, we are going to have prop of a string password and then we are going to have prop string roles. This class is representing our member in order to be created or edited. So that's why we have called it as member at edit DTO. And since we are going to receive a model based on this class, so we can have some data annotation over here. And this is going to be almost the same as if I open account and register DTO. So this is the model that we are re receiving as a type inside our account register endpoint. So we are going to receive almost the same, but a little different. So we're not interested in any string lengths for our first and last name because admin can do anything what they wish to do. So we're not restricting for any minimum length and maximum length for first name and last name. And the username can be anything. So we're not restricting for any email validation for the username. So after I created my member at edit DTO, then I can head back to admin controller and then I can bring member at edit DTO from here. Okay, inside my get member, I can have var member equals await user manager dot users. Then we can have dot where x goes to x. X dot username is not sd dot admin username. So first of all, we're checking if the username is not admin username. And then we can have double ampersand and x dot id equals to the id that we have received. So we are going to fetch the member from ASP.NET user class based on these two conditions. So first of all, the username should not be admin and the, and the ID we have passed is the ID that we received from this endpoint. Then we are going to do projection once again. So I can have that select and we are going to project to member at edit DTO. So that's why I can have that select. Then I can have M goes to then I can have new member at edit DTO. Then I can have curly brace. So I put enter and I can have open and close curly brace. So I get rid of this ID. And inside my curly brace, I can have ID equals m.id. Then I have username equals m.username. And first name equals m.firstname last name equals m dot last name and for my roles i can have roles equals a string dot join and then i can join them with comma and then 
have a comma over here and I have underscore user manager dot get roles async I, I can pass the user so we have called it as m so I can pass m and then we are going to have get a waiter and get result and after all this I can have dot first or default async and I can put a semicolon over here and finally I can return okay and I return the member so this endpoint is giving me the member and that member type is member add edit DTO and this is basically for whenever the admin is trying to edit a member so they have to see what information that member has and that is based on member add edit DTO and then we are going to check the database based on these two conditions so the ID has to match but the username should not match the admin so admin cannot edit itself and then we are going to project into member at edit so the same way as we have done over here so if I scroll down then for each member or for each M I have called it M then I'm going to have ID is M.ID username first name last name is M.username last name and first name so the same way as we have done over here but we don't have the date created inside our member at edit DTO. Then for roles, I have a, a string roles. But before, if I have over roles, we had I enumerable of a string. So the reason is because we are passing the roles as comma separated a string instead of I enumerable of roles. And I can give you the reason why we are doing that when we are working on the angular side. So I'm going to test this endpoint by running the API application. So if I run and then I'm going to open my Postman and I'm going to make a duplicate of get members once again. So I select get members and so I select duplicate for get members and I can make the modification. So I can remove copy and I can make it as get member and I can have ID over here that we are expecting to pass so that's the name of my request and for the endpoint i can have get member so i remove s then i can have forward slash and we need to pass the id so i open get members and i'm going to pass another id so i copy a player id then i head back to get member and i paste it over here and then I can save this request into my collection. And once I send, then I can see the following result. So player has only one role. That's why we can see player. And the password is null because uh, that is for editing. So that's fine. And we can see ID, username, first name, last name. And we are going to make a use of this get member whenever the admin is trying to edit the member. So the last thing on our list in order to complete admin controller is add an edit member. So whenever the admin is trying to add or edit a member. So I open Visual Studio and then I stop the application and I'm going to have another endpoint. So after get member, I'm going to have HTTP post since the admin is posting something. Then I can have add dash edit dash member and I'm going to have public async task of i action result since we're not returning anything and then i can name it as add edit member and we are going to receive member add edit dto so i have member add edit dto and i name it as model so this is my endpoint so basically we're trying to add or edit a member and the admin can also change the password of of the member who is adding or editing so if I go to member add edit DTO, if I go to definition, we are going to put some data annotation for username, first name, last name, and roles. So all these properties has to be populated. So I can have required on top of my username, and then I can copy my required, and then I can paste it into first name, last name, and as well as roles. So I skip password and ID, they both can be null because if the admin is trying to add a member then the id is null but if the admin is trying to edit a member the id is some value 
So that's how we can distinguish between adding or editing a member. But why the password can be null? Because if the admin tries to edit a member, for example, they try to edit username or person last name for a member. And if the admin decides not to change the password for that member, then this password can be null. But otherwise, if the admin has put some value inside the password, then we have to check for the requirement that we have set for creating a member or updating a member. So if I open register DTO here, we can check that password must be at least six characters or 15 characters. And we are going to apply this check inside our endpoint, not inside our data annotation. And the reason is because if I open my program.cs and if I scroll down, so in here we have configured some requirement for the password. And that requirement is the length has to be six characters. So we have to do this. Otherwise, we are going to receive an error. So the way we can do is if I open admin controller and inside this add edit member, first of all, I'm going to check if the model has ID or it doesn't have ID. So I can have user. So I select user and I name as user. Then I'm going to check if a string is null or empty and we are going to pass model dot id so this has to be capital i and if the model dot id is empty then this is for adding a new member and i have else and this is for editing editing an existing member then for adding a new member the password has to be populated so i'm going to check if a string that is null or empty and then i can pass model dot password so if the password is empty and i can have my second condition or model dot password dot length is less than six so if any of these two conditions are true then i can return a bad request and i can apply that bad request inside my model state so i can have model dot state dot add model error and then i can have errors and comma you can say password must be at least six characters and then i can return bad request and i pass the model state as well so let's try this and let's understand better what we are trying to do so in order to get rid of this error message i'm going to return okay and then let's try this endpoint. And I'm going to put a breakpoint over here. So I start the API application and I'm going to open my Postman. Then I'm going to duplicate get member. So I select duplicate and in here I can change the name into add edit member. And this is a post. So I select post. And I can remove all this. And for the route, I can have add dash edit dash member. And the authorization is better token JWT as well. So I can open body. And then inside my body, I can select raw and I can select JSON. And I'm going to have the following properties. So I can have ID. So I'm going to save this request. So I have add edit member as a post signature over here. Then I'm going to send. And when I send, then I'm going to receive the following error messages. And that is coming from the data annotation. So I can see the role field is required. Last name field is required. Username and first name is required. So these error messages are coming from the data annotation. So if I go back and I open member add edit, then those error messages are coming from this attribute that we have provided. So I'm going to have manual data annotation for my password. And that is because the admin can either change a password for editing a member or not changing the password for that member. But for the create, they must provide the password. So if I go back to admin controller, 
adding a new member, I have put the if condition for password check. So if the password is null or the password length is less than six characters, then copy the following error message into my errors and provide the following message to the username. And we are going to return a bad request and we pass the model state. So I'm going to satisfy all these errors but i'm not going to satisfy the password so i'm going to put some random characters into all of them so make sure don't put anything inside id because the id has to be not and that's the first condition if the model that id is not then i'm going to send my request as soon as i send then i can get caught inside my breakpoint and i can step over so the id is null so we are going to come to the if statement then we are going to check if the password is empty so the password is empty then we are going to add the password must be at least six characters into our errors and if i continue then i can see password must be at least six characters so we have manually added this data annotation for our password and i'm going to satisfy the first condition but i put less than six characters so if i send so i can continue and then i can see the same error message because the second condition was not satisfied and the password length was less than six characters so i'm going to remove the breakpoint and this time i'm going to send six characters of password so if i send then i can see okay and we haven't came to this password check if a statement Okay, let's continue our adding. Uh, so I'm going to stop the application. And that was for the demo purpose, basically. And after my if statement, I'm going to have user. So the user that we have, so the user that we have over here, I can have user equals new user. And then I can provide the property of the users. So I can have first name equals model dot first name. And we can pass it to lower so because we inside our account and inside our register if i navigate to the register we have turn everything to lower so we are going to do the same inside our admin controller as well so if i go back then i can have last name equals model dot last name dot to lower and username equals model dot username dot to lower and then we can have email confirm because admin is creating a member and the email address should be true so we're not going to have any other problem if that member is trying to log in with the user account that admin has created so that's why we are manually setting the email confirm to true and then i can have a semicolon after here i can have var result equals await user manager dot create async and we can pass the user and as well as model dot password so we are creating the user and we can check if not the result dot succeeded then we can return a bad request and we can pass result dot errors okay and now we need to assign the roles to for creating a new member and if i go back to member add edit so as i said uh, we are receiving a string of roles and that string contains comma separated roles for example if i can put comment i can have example of an inside string we can have admin comma player comma manager so we are passing three roles to whoever is being created by having the following string values and i can go back to admin controller and and in here after my else i'm going to handle the roles over here and we are handling the roles for both editing and creating a member so that's why i have put it after my if else statements so i can have var user roles equals await underscore user manager dot get roles async and we pass the user so this is complaining use of unassigned local variable user so because it is expecting to receive some user or assigning the user inside our else condition so in order to get around that i can have user equals await user manager dot find by id async and we can pass model.id 
But for now, we are completing the adding a new member. But since that was an error and it was complaining, so I have added this for my editing. So, and we are going to complete editing in the next video. But for this video, I'm trying to complete adding a new member. So we have fetched the user roles and then we are going to remove users existing roles. So we can have a comment remove. So we are trying to remove the users existing roles. So we can have await user manager that remove from roles async. Then we can pass the user and user roles. So we fetch the user roles and we are removing all the existing roles for that user. And then we are going to add the new roles that we have received inside our model. So after here, I can have for each var role in model dot roles. So this model dot roles is string, but this is a comma separated string. So we can make a use of that split and then we can pass comma. And then we can have dot to array. So we are converting this to an array and separating this by comma. So we are going to have individual role inside model dot roles. And I gave you the example. So if, if I go to the definition, this is the example of passing the roles into this model. So I go back and then inside here we can have var role to add equals await underscore role manager dot roles dot first or default async and then we can have r goes to r dot name equals to the role and then we are going to check if role to add is not null then have await user manager dot add role to async so we select add to role async and then we are going to pass the user and and we will pass the role as well. So we are adding that role. So over here, I'm looping through that roles and we have separated that by comma and we converted to an array. Then inside this, this is a single role and the type is a string. So we are going to fetch that role from the role manager and we are going to check if that role exists, does exist into our database. Then if the role to add is not null, then we are going to add that role to our user. So for example, if the, if the admin has passed some random roles, then we are not going to add it to the user. So we are going to add the role to the user if that role is valid. And in here, instead of returning OK, since we have written no content, we are going to return no content as well. So I would like to test this endpoint for creating a new member. I'm going to start the application. Then inside my add edit member, I'm going to remove ID. So this ID has to be empty because we are adding. And for the username, we can pass any random characters. It's not required to be a valid email address. So I can have Jacob as my username. And then the first name is Jacob and the last name is Hamilton. And role, I make Jacob as admin, comma player. And the password I put one two three four five six. Then I'm going to send this request. And once I send, then I can receive two or four no content. That means it has been created Jacob into my ASP.NET user. So if I open my square, and then if I go to ASP.NET users and I execute this, then I can see Jacob has been added to my ASP.NET users. And let's try to log in with Jacob. So I'm going to copy the username and I head back to login. And instead of admin and example.com, I'm going to have Jacob as the user. And if I send, then we can see we have been successfully logged in and we have saved the Jacob JWT into our token. And since Jacob is admin, then Jacob has the ability to call any of these admin request so i'm going to select get members and then i hit send since jacob is admin then he can also see all the members and as well as him itself so i can see one of the user is jacob and that is and that is the same person that we have been logged in with and the roles is player and admin because we have 
added player and role inside add edit member by this string characters. Okay, we have completed add member. So let's work on editing an existing member. So I open Visual Studio and I stop the API application and then I scroll to the else part. So first of all, we are going to check for the password. If the password is not empty, then we are going to check uh, whether the password is at least six characters of length. So after my comment, I'm going to have and some enters then i'm going to have if model dot password and we are going to check so just before here we can have the string dot is null or empty then we can have a parenthesis and we put the model dot password inside here so if the password is not null or empty so in order to do that i can put a question mark at the beginning so if the password is not null or empty then I can have another if condition. So I can have if model.password.length is less than six characters. So that's the case. If the admin has provided some password for the user that is trying to edit and that password is less than six characters, then we are going to copy the same message and returning a bad request. So I copy these two line of code and then I paste it over here. So that was our first condition. And the second condition is checking the super admin ID. So nobody can change anything from the super admin. So I'm going to borrow some other quotes from another endpoint. So from here, lock member, I can copy this. And then I head to the top and inside my else. And after password check, I'm going to paste it over here. So if is admin user ID, so I can have model dot id then we are returning bad request and the super admin not allowed change message and finally we are going to fetch the user based on the id and we can have if user is null then return no not found and everything is going right we are going to make the modification to the user so i can have user dot first name is model dot first name dot to lower and then we can have user dot last name is model dot last name dot to lower and as well as user dot username is model dot username dot to lower and i'm going to check if the admin has changed the password so i can have another if condition so if a string is null or empty or basically is not null or empty for model dot password then I'm going to remove the password of the user and then add the password to the user. So I can have await.usermanager.remove. So we have remove password async and this removes a user's password. So I select this and we can pass the user. And after here, we can add the new password. So I can have await usermanager.add password async and we can pass the user and as well as the model.password and the rest uh, is fine except the message so instead of returning no content i would like to send some message and i can borrow some codes from my account controller so if i open and inside register if i navigate down so i can copy return okay from here so i copy this and then I head back to admin controller and instead of returning no content, then I can have if a string is null or empty and we pass model.id. So if it is for create, then return this message. I make the modification and else return this message. So for the first message, I'm going to have member created and then I can have instead of this, I remove all this message and I can have a string interpolation. So I put dollar just before quotation and then I have a curly brace and have model dot username. And then after this curly brace, I can have has been created. And I can do the same thing for my else. So I can have member edited instead of created. And then I can copy this and I paste it over here. And username has been updated. So let's try to update an existing member.
So I start my API application and then I open Postman and I need to be logged in as an admin user account and as well as I need to get some ID of the member. So if I open get members and right now I'm, I am logged in as Jacob, so that's fine because Jacob is admin, but I'm going to make a modification to my manager. So I copy the ID of manager and then I open add edit member and I paste it over here. And for the username, I can name it as manager. So instead of having manager at example.com, I can have manager. And for the first name, I can have test. And for the last name, I can have test2. And the password, I can change it to 888888. And we are changing the manager roles as well. So we are changing manager to be as an admin and a player. So if I send, then I can see member edited and inside, inside my message, I can see manager has been updated. I would like to do another modification to my API. So I stop the API application and that modification is whenever the user has registered to our application and we are going to set the player role to the user. So if I open account controller and then I have to find for register endpoint. So we are in register endpoint and after creating the user and after checking the user is succeeded, then I'm going to have the following code. So I can have await user manager dot add to role async and we are passing the user to add and the role and the role is sd dot player role. So we are setting player role by default to whoever is trying to register to our application and i can copy this and inside my register with third party so if i scroll down so i find register with third party and whenever we are trying to create the account so after here i can paste it over here as well so we are setting player role to whoever is trying to register via the regular registration or with third party and the role is player for that new created user account. Okay, I hope you were able to finish your assignment or at least try your best to do something with this and handle this situation. But anyways, we are going to solve this assignment together. So first of all, I navigate to sd.cs and I'm going to create another public const integer. So after super admin not allowed, I'm going to have public const int and I name it as maximum login attempts and I set it to three. So this is my rule for maximum login attempts. And then I head back to account controller and inside my login. Then after if result was not succeeded, so I'm going to put curly brace because we have to do a bunch of things over here. And before returning an authorize, I'm going to check if the username is not equal to the admin user. So I have if not user dot username dot equals and then I have st dot admin username. So if the username is not admin, then I'm going to increment access failed count by one. So basically, if I open the database, I'm going to increment this column by one for that user. So I'm going to have await underscore user manager dot access failed async. And then if I hover over this, then I can see increments the access fail count for the user as an asynchronous operation. So this is going to increment that value by one and this is expecting to receive a user. So we pass the user and we put semicolon. And after this if a statement, then I'm going to have if user dot access failed count. So we have that access failed count is greater or equals to st dot maximum login attempts. So if that's the case, then we are going to lock the user for one day. So I'm going to have await underscore user manager dot set lock out end date and async. So I select this one set lock out end date async. Then I'm going to pass the user and I'm going to give it a time. So I pass the user first, then I can have daytime.utc now 
dot add days and we have passing one to the add days and we put a semicolon and if that's true then we are going to return an authorize and then we have a string dot format and basically i can copy paste the top one so i copy a string format of the top one all the way so i copy this and i can paste it inside my unauthorized so we can say your account has been locked you should wait until whatever the time utc time to be able to log in and after that we are going to return an authorize so up to here we are checking if the result was not succeeded then if the user was not the super admin then we are going to count and increment the access fail by one and then we are going to check if that access fail is greater or equals to the sd maximum attempts so if this is the first one then we are not going inside this if statement we are going to only return unauthorized username invalid username or password otherwise if the user access fail count is equals or greater than sd.maximum login attempts then we are going to lock the user and we are going to say that your account has been locked and uh, you should wait and if the user has put the correct username and password so we are going to reset that access failed count to zero so up to here the user has put invalid password so if i make a comment but after here the user has put the valid password so we are going to reset access failed count async so we have another function from user manager and that is going to be await underscore user manager dot reset access failed count async and we are going to pass a user so this is going to reset the access failed count for the specified user and then we are going to unlock the user so i have await user manager dot set lockout end date and then we are going to pass a user and we are going to pass now so this is the same situation that we have unlocked the user inside admin controller so basically we are going to set this value to null this column to null so i have an error here so if i scroll to the right i'm missing a semicolon for this and let's try this functionality so if i start my application and i'm going to log in with one of the users so if i go get at get members then i'm going to log in with a player so i'm going to copy the username and then inside my account and inside login i'm going to put the username and this player has one two three four five six as a password so this is incorrect so if i send then i can see invalid username or password and if i execute for player so the second one if I scroll to the right, so I have access failed count by one. And then if I try to do one more time, so this should be two. And before I make the second attempt, I'm going to log in with a valid password. So instead of this, I'm going to put a valid password. And if I attempt, then I am being logged in. So if I go back to account controller and login, then we are going to reset that access failed count because the user has input the correct password before the third attempt. So if I execute and this is becomes zero. So that is fine. But this time I'm going to do with three attempts. So I would like to lock this user. I'm going to put invalid password and I have the first attempt second attempt and the third attempt so for the third attempt i can see your account has been locked you should wait until this time and if i examine my database so for the player which is the second one i'm going to see lockout end and the access fail count is three so they have to wait one day before trying to do the fourth attempt and if they do the fourth attempts then they're going to be locked for another day and that was the end of this section but before i would like to continue with angular i would like to drop my database and 
create my database one more time because we have changed something over here so i would like to have a fresh database based on the context seed that we have created earlier so i'm going to stop the application and then inside my package manager console i'm going to have drop database and i say yes and then i'm going to run my api project this will go and create my database automatically so we have come to the end of this section and we are going to push our changes to github so i click on git changes and i'm going to make the following message so i have section 09 api dash admin feature so i commit r and i'm going to push it to github
So right now everything is working, but there is a problem. So if I log out and I log in as a player, so we don't see the admin button, but I can manually go to admin. So if I type admin and I hit enter, then I can see admin works. So we don't want that feature to be available for any other user except the admin role. So in order to handle this situation, we need to create another guard the same way as we have created authorization guard. So if I open Visual Studio Code, then inside guards, we have authorization guard. And inside here, we are going to check if the user has been populated. Then we return true. Otherwise, we navigate the user back to login and we say some message. So we are going to approach similar, the same situation, but except for only admin. So I'm going to navigate to my guards. So I open the second tab and I'm going to do CD dot dot. Then I go CD guards and inside my guard, I'm going to create another guard. So I can say NGG guard. Then I name it as admin and I skip test and I make it flat and I hit enter. Then inside here, I select can activate and I hit enter. Then admin guard has been created for me. So I'm going to open admin guard. And inside here, we are going to only return an observable of Boolean. So I can get rid of this. So inside the can activate, I can get rid of this. And then we are going to leave observable of Boolean, but I can remove this and as well as the rest. So we are going to only return an observable of Boolean. And if I hover over here, it, it says can activate is deprecated. So I can remove implements can activate as well. So I can remove this. And then I'm going to have a constructor. So after here, I'm going to have a constructor. And inside my constructor, I'm going to inject account service, shared service, and router. So I select router from at angular router and then I put the curly brace and then I can format alt shift F. So inside my can activate, I remove this and then I can have return. Then inside my can activate, I can have return this dot account service dot user dollar dot pipe and then I have map. So bring map from rxjs and then I have inside parentheses and another parentheses i have user of type user so i select my user from my mothers and then i have null as a second option of the user type and then i'm going to have a arrow function then i'm going to make a use of that decoded token so i can copy and paste from some code from user has role directive so if i open this and i'm going to copy this and then i head back to admin guard and I'm going to paste it over here. And we need to bring JWT decode. So if I head back and if I copy this import and I head back to admin guard and I'm going to paste it over here. So after const decoded token, then we are going to have if decoded token dot role dot includes and inside includes we have single quotation and we put admin. So if that's true, then return true. So just above my const decoded token, we are going to handle if user. So I have this if a statement just above here, and I'm going to cut this and paste it inside my inside this if a statement for user. So we are going to check if the user is populated and then do the following. Else, so inside here, I'm going to have return false. So as soon as I return false, then all the error has gone. And just before returning a false, then I can show a notification. So I can say this dot shared service dot show notification, and I can give a false message. So that becomes a red message. And then as a title, I can have admin area. And as a message, I can say leave now. And I put semicolon and then I'm going to navigate the user back to the home page. So I can say this dot router dot navigate by URL and take the user back to the home page. So I'm going to remove this extra line and I put a semicolon inside here. So for this can activate, we are taking out the user by taking out the user from the user dollar. And we are going to make a use of pipe and map. And then 
So if the user has been populated, then we are going to check the JWT inside the user.jwt and we are going to see if decoded token.role.includes admin. So if that user is admin role, then we return true. Otherwise, we are going to display the following message and redirect the user back to the homepage and we return false. So we can make a use of this admin guard inside our admin routing module. So instead of having this, I can have the same format as we have done inside app routing module. So if I open app routing module and this format, we have implemented the authorization guard. So I can copy this, the whole thing. So I copy whatever we have run guards and resolvers inside here. So I copy the whole thing and I head back to admin routing module and I can paste it just below here so instead of authorization guard we have admin guard so i select admin guard and for the children i can remove these two components and i can cut the default route for the admin and i paste it down here so with this we have implemented the authorization guard for admin and i can remove unnecessary imports so let's try this functionality. If I save everything and I'm going to head back to the browser. And as soon as I head back to the browser, then I can see admin area leave now. So because I have been logged in as a player and I try to navigate to admin area. So if I select this, then I can see admin area leave now. But if I log out and I log in as admin at example.com, and then if I click admin, then I can see admin works because admin has the role of admin inside the JWT token. In this video, we are going to complete our admin service and we are going to create the interface that we need for admin service. So I open Visual Studio Code and inside shared, I open models and then I minimize account and I'm going to create another folder inside my models. So I hit new folder and I name it as admin. So this represents all the models for my admin controller. And then right click and I hit new file. And the first model is memberview.ts. And this memberview.ts is the same as we have memberview DTO inside Visual Studio. So I'm going to create the same properties inside my export interface memberview. So I have ID as string, I have username as string, I have first name as string, last name as string, date created as date, then I have is the log as boolean, and I have roles as a string array. Then in the same time, I'm going to create another model. So I right click on admin and I hit new file and I name it as member add edit.ts then inside here we have export interface and member add edit then in the properties we have id and the id is optional so i have question mark then colon and the type is string then i have username as string first name as string last name as string and password the password is also optional, so I have question mark, colon, string. Then I have roles as string. So for member at edit, we have roles as string, but for member view, we have roles as a string array. Because if I open Visual Studio, inside member view, we had I enumerator of roles, but for member at edit, we had a string of roles. And we were going to populate that string by comma separated roles. So we are going to do the same approach inside our Angular. Then after I created my models, then I'm going to open admin service. So I'm going to minimize account and then I open admin and I open admin.service.ts. Then inside the constructor, we have private HTTP column of type HTTP client. Then I'm going to have my first method. So I have get members. And inside get members, we have return this.http.get and we are going to receive. So that is member view 
an array so this is an array of member view so make sure to bring member view from your model then i close the angle bracket and i have parentheses then backtick and inside backtick i have dollar and curly brace environment so make sure to bring environments from development and then we have app url and then we have forward slash api forward slash admin forward slash get dash members and we put a semicolon then i'm going to copy get members and i paste it down one more time and for the second we have get member and for the member we are going to receive member at edit so i remove this then we have member at edit so bring member at edit and for the members we are going to remove the s but instead we have forward slash dollar sign and then we are going to pass an id so i need to bring id inside my arguments so i have id colon as type string and we are going to get the member by the following endpoint and we pass the id and after this we have get application roles and this application roles receives nothing but we have another http get so i copy this and then i paste it down here and then we are going to receive a string array so i specify a string array and then we are going to hit get application dash roles and i'm going to remove the forward slash and id and the next method is add edit member so we have add edit member and we are going to receive a model and the type of model is member add edit so select this one and then we are going to have return this dot http dot post and then we have a back tick and i'm going to copy this and i paste it down here and then we have add dash edit dash member and we are going to pass the model and we have another so i'm going to copy get member and i paste it down here and instead we have lock member and we are going to receive id of string then we have this dot http dot put so this is put and we don't have any type so i remove this angle bracket and we are going to call api forward slash admin and lock so i type lock instead of get member and then we have lock dash member and we are going to pass the id inside our url but we have to pass a single object as a body so we have a empty curly brace and that is because we are going to call put so we have another so i copy this and i paste it down here and the name is unlock and this one is unlock so the last one is delete member so i copy unlock and i paste it down and i name it as delete member and we receive id and the type is delete so we have this dot http dot delete and then instead of unlock we have delete and we pass the id and we have passed empty object so our admin service is complete and this is what we have so far we have get members get member get application roles add edit member lock member unlock member and delete member
Okay, let's handle lock and unlock first. So open admin.component.ts. Then inside here we have lock member, and we are receiving ID of string. Then we have this dot admin service dot lock member, and we pass the ID. And then we are going to subscribe, and we have next, but we're not receiving anything. So I have underscore, and then we have arrow and curly brace. Then we are going to call a helper method. So underneath I have private and then I'm going to call handle lock unlock filter and message. And inside this helper method we have ID string. Then we have locking as boolean. Then I'm going to have let member equals this dot find member and we pass the ID. So we need to create another helper method for find member. And then inside here, I have private find member and the ID is string. So we receive ID of string. Then we are going to return member view or undefined. So from this helper method, we are going to return either member view or undefined. And we are going to fetch the member from our members array. So if I scroll top, this is our members array. And we are going to fetch one single member from this array. So we can have let member equals this dot members dot find. So we use JavaScript formula of find. And then we have x goes to x dot id equals to id that we receive. Then we can have if member, if the member was found, then return member. Otherwise, over here we return undefined. So inside my handle lock unlock filter message, we can have if member, then if the member was found, then we can say member that is locked equals to the opposite side of member that is locked. Then we can check if locking, so if we are locking the member, then we are going to display the following notification. So we can have this uh, shared service that show a notification and we are showing a success message. So we have true. Then as a title, we can have locked comma and as a message, we can have active dollar sign carry brace member dot username. And then after carry brace, we have member has been locked. And I can put a semicolon. Then I can copy this and i have after if i have else and i paste that over here and instead of lock we have unlocked and member has been unlocked so as a message we have member has been unlocked then i'm going to copy the private helper method and then i head to my lock member so after we receive no content from the api we can have this dot handle lock unlock filter on message and we can pass the ID and we pass as locking true because we are locking the user. So I can copy lock member and I paste it down here. And instead we have unlock member and everything goes the same. And then inside unlock member, we have this dot admin service dot unlock member. So we pass ID to unlock member. And after we receive no content, then we are going to call handle lock unlock filter and message. And this is going to be false because we are unlocking the user. So I can head back to admin.component.html and inside here. So inside lock a tag, I can have click event. And this click event is going to call lock member. And we can pass member.id. And I can copy this and I paste it down here. And we have unlock member. So I would like to test lock and unlock. So if I save all, then I head back to my browser. So player, I would like to lock the player at example. So if I click lock, then I can see lock player at example.com member has been locked. And if I open my square and if I select top thousand and for the player, which is the first one, if I scroll to the right i can see the player has been locked for five days and then i can click ok and i can click unlock once again so if i click unlock then i can see unlock player has been unlocked and if i execute one more time and for the first row we can see lockout end is null so lock and unlock is working
Okay, let's work on delete. And for delete, we are going to have a confirmation. So if the admin would like to delete a member, so once they click, we would like to a pop up. And are you sure you want to delete this? And if the admin clicks yes, then it is going to delete the member. So for that, we are going to get some help from NGX Bootstrap. So if I open NGX Bootstrap, search for NGX Bootstrap, and I click on the first link, then I'm going to select the version 10. Because we are using Angular 15, so I select 10. And then inside components, I'm going to click on models. And then I scroll down. So there is something called confirm window. And if I click on here, then we can see, do you want to confirm yes or no? So we are going to make a use of this model. So first of all, inside the template, I'm going to copy this. So from ng template, just copy this. So make sure to copy this. Then head back to Visual Studio Code. And underneath your table, then paste that template that you just copied. And for the message, we can remove this. And we can say, are you... And then we have confirm and decline. So we need to create these methods inside our admin.component.ts. So I have confirmed, then I head back to admin.component.ts. And after my unlock, we have confirmed. Then I'm going to create decline as well. So the error has gone from my HTML. Then if I go back to the browser and inside component, then we are going to have model ref and private model service as BS model service. So we are going to create these two inside our admin.component.ts. So I open Visual Studio Code and inside admin.component.ts. So just at the top, we have model ref question mark of type BS model ref. So I select from NGX Bootstrap model. Then inside my constructor, we have private model service of type BS model service. So I select this one. Then I scroll down and inside decline, we have this dot model ref question mark dot height. But for confirm, we are going to complete later. So before this, we have another method. So I name it as delete member and delete member is receiving ID of string. Then template of type template ref. So I select template ref from at angular four. And then we have of type any. Then inside this method, we have let member find the member from this dot find member, the helper method that we created earlier. So we pass the ID. Then we can check if member. So if the member was found, then we can have another property called member to delete. So if I scroll to the top and just after my members, so I hit enter. We can have member to delete of type member view or undefined. So we have added another variable component called member to delete. So if I scroll down inside my delete member, and after we check the we have found the member, then we can have this dot member to delete equals member. And then we can have this dot modal ref equals this dot modal service dot show. And then we are going to pass the template, comma, and the class. And for the class, we have inside single quotation and modal sm. And then we can put a semicolon over here. And for the confirm, then we can say if the, this the member to delete, then we are going to actually delete the member. So we can say this the admin service, the delete member, and then we can have this dot member to delete dot id then we are going to subscribe and inside next we can have this dot shared service dot show notification and we show a success then comma and as a title we have deleted then comma then backtick member of dollar sign this dot member to delete dot username then after the curl brace we have has been deleted and i can put a semicolon over here then we are going to remove that member from our members array so if i scroll to the top so we have members 
and we are going to delete and take it out from this array so if i scroll down so we have this dot members equals this dot members dot filter and we have x goes to x dot id is not equals to this dot member to delete it dot id and we have to put a question mark over here then we have this dot member to delete equals to undefined and we can hide the model so we can have this dot model ref dot hide and if i open admin.component.html so for my delete i'm going to give it a click event and we can have delete member and we pass member dot id comma template and let's try our functionality so i save all and if i open my node then we don't have any error and i'm going to open the browser inside my identity app browser i'm going to delete vip player if i click on delete then i can see are you sure you want to delete so i'm going to add the username over here for now i hit no and if i open visual studio code and inside my template i'm going to have double curly brace and inside here we have member to delete dot username so if i save and let's try one more time so i delete vip player and then i can see are you sure you want to delete vip player at example.com and if i click yes then we can see deleted member of vip at example has been deleted so i can click ok and if i open my square server and if i execute then i can see vip player has been removed from my asp.net users so let's discuss what we have done over here so first of all we are going to make a use of a model and that model has been brought or the example has been uh, given to us inside our ngx bootstrap and we have made a use of config window and we followed the components and the template example that we received from ngx bootstrap so we have ng template and we have hashtag template and inside this we have the following uh, model body and then we have yes and no button but inside uh, our button our actual button we are going to call delete member and we are going to pass member.id and we are going to pass template and this template is coming from this template that we have over here so basically we are going to pass the template to our delete member method so if i head back to admin.component.ts and inside delete member we are going to receive a template and the type is template ref and that is basically taking that hashtag template that we passed then we are going to fetch the member and if we have found the member then we are going to set member to delete to the found member and we are going to display the model so we can say this are model ref equals model service that show and we pass that template that we receive and based on this class we are going to display the model and that model has the confirm and decline button so if the user clicks on decline then we are going to simply uh, hide the model but just before here we are going to have this dot member to delete equals undefined so we are going to set member to delete undefined as well so that's one thing that i have modified and then uh, if the user has clicked on confirm then we are going to check if the this dot member to delete was populated then we are going to call the admin service delete member and we are going to pass the id and then we are going to subscribe and we say this member was deleted and we are going to take out that member which was deleted from our members array so the formula is this so we can say this dot members dot filter and we are going to filter all the members that the id is not to the one that we deleted and we are going to set inside our this dot members so this dot members has the new array which doesn't include the one that we deleted and then we are going to unset the member to delete to undefined as well and we hide the model so i'm going to save all we have delete functionality as well okay now let's handle add edit member so first of all we need to create a component inside our admin folder so inside my second tab i'm going to navigate to admin folder so i do src app and admin then i'm going to have ngc 
add dash edit dash member and I skip test. Then I'm going to open admin routing module and then inside children I'm going to have another path. So I copy this down and the second path is add dash edit dash member and the component is add edit member component. So this component add edit member component is responsible for both creating a new member or editing an existing member. Because of that, we are going to have two paths. So I copy this one more time. And the second path is going to be for a slash current ID. So for creating, we are going to navigate to this URL. But for editing, we are going to navigate to this URL. For editing, we are going to also pass the ID of a member that we would like to edit but if the idea was not provided then we know that we are creating a new member and then i'm going to open add edit member.ts so i open add edit member.component.ts and inside here i'm going to have the following properties So I have the following properties, member form, form initialized, add new, submitted, error messages, application roles, and existing member roles. And then I'm going to have a constructor, and I add the following services. Then I'm going to implement on init, so just above here I say implement on init, and I fix the interface. Then inside my ng on init, I'm going to have const id equals this dot activated route dot snapshot dot pram map dot get id. And then I say if id, then we can say this dot add new is false. And then we are going to call this dot get member and we pass the id. And inside else, we have this dot initialize form. And we pass undefined. So first of all, I'm going to create get member. So inside here, I have get member, and this receives an ID of type string. Then we have this dot admin service dot get member. And we pass the ID and we subscribe. And inside next, we are receiving a member, and we can say this dot initialize form, and we pass member. Then I'm going to create my initialize form. So I copy this and I have initialize form. And inside the argument, we are receiving a member of type member add edit. So I bring member add edit or undefined. Then we can say if member. So if the member was populated, then this dot member form. So I select this dot member form is this dot form builder dot group. And then we can have the following properties. And we can initialize the properties as well by the member that we receive. So I have ID. So if the member was populated, then we have the following form. And we are going to initialize all the values to our member form. So I can see I have a typo for first name. So I name it as first name. So if I go to definition and inside here, I have first name. So I fix this typo and then I head back to add edit member component and I fix this as well. Then I put a semicolon and then I have this dot existing member roles equals member dot roles dot split. And we are going to split by comma and inside else. So after if I have a else, and I'm going to copy my member form and I paste it down here. But for each, we are going to initialize it to empty. So I remove member.first name and member all, all we have that member dot something. So I remove those and we initialize it empty. And finally, after this if and else, I'm going to have this dot form initialized is true. So let's understand what we are trying to do right now. 
after the component is initialized so inside ng on init we are going to fetch the id and this id is being passed by the router link so if i go back to admin component.html then we are going to pass admin edit member and we are going to pass the id and that's how we are going to fetch the id or if i scroll to the top we are going to only call add edit member we are not passing anything so that's why we have inside admin routing module we have two paths so one is for the creating and one is for the editing we do have an id so i go back to add edit member then we are going to receive the id from the url and then if the id was provided then we can say add new is false so we are actually editing a member that's how we can distinguish between either creating or editing so if add new is false then we are editing if it is true then we are adding and then we are going to fetch the member so if this is for edit then we are going to fetch the member from our api so we have this dot admin service dot get member we pass the id and then we are receiving the member from the response and we pass that member into our initialized form so inside our initialized form we are receiving an argument and this is either a type of member edit or undefined so if we do have a member then we are going to create our form and we initialize all the properties to whatever we receive so that's why for first name last name username id and roles we do have member.firstname member.lastname member.username and member.roles and as well as member.id but for the password we are setting empty because the admin doesn't know what the password of the member is but they have the ability either to change and they can decide either to change or not to change so if they keep this as empty that means that member password is not going to be changed and we have discussed this in the previous section as we were doing the api controller for admin for the password for creating we are going to initialize it to empty and we are going to have validators that require and then validators that mean length six and then we have comma and validators that max length 15. so the same validation for the password as we have doing inside registers so let's handle add edit member that component .html. so i open that up and then I'm going to have div dot and then inside this div so inside here we have asterisk ng if and inside ng if we have form initialized so if the form was initialized then we have div dot and after this we have main dot and then we are going to have a form and inside form we have form group equals member form so we have red and we can see can't bind to form group that's because we need to import shared module inside our admin module so if i open admin module then inside imports then i'm going to have shared module so i select shared module and the error has been resolved so i head back to add edit member.component.html then we have ng submit and we are going to call submit and we have auto complete off so i copy submit and i head back to add edit component and then after my initialized form i'm going to have submit and then i head back to the html file and i'm going to have inside my form i'm going to have div dot and inside my div i have h3 And then I have a span and inside my spans inside here I have asterisk ng if and if this is add new then display add and I copy the span and if this is not add new then we can say update and after the two span I can have member so either add member or update member for the title of my form and after this div I'm going to have so I put a bunch of new lines and then I'm going to have div dot and inside my div form floating then I'm going to have an input then we can have form control name equals first name and type is text and placeholder is first name and class is 
form control and then i'm going to have bracket class dot is invalid equals submitted double ampersand member form dot get and inside parentheses i have single quotation first name and then question mark and dot errors if there's an error then add is invalid class to my existing class and i'm going to have a span and the class is text danger and inside here we have asterisk ng if submitted double ampersand member form dot get and inside parentheses inside single quotation we have first name and then we have question mark that has error and the error is required if the error is required then display first name is required and i'm going to copy this then i paste it down so for the second time we can have last name and the form control name is last name and this is last name and this is a last name as well and for the span we have last name and after i finish with last name then i can copy one more time and this is username and for the placeholder we can say username and for member.get we can have username so make sure you have user with capital n but since this is a placeholder and this is only for displaying to the user so we can have username with lowercase n it doesn't matter but our form is with user capital n and this is what we have inside our form control name and then for the span we have username so the username is required and for any validation we can say username is required so i remove the name then i'm going to have another diff so i copy and paste one more time and this is for password so I substitute everything with password. So I copy password and I paste everywhere I see first name. And for the placeholder, we can say password. And inside here, we can say password is required. And then I can go to register.component.html and I find password. Then I can copy. Password must be at least six and maximum 15 characters. So I can copy this span and then I head back to add edit member. And underneath this span for the password, I can paste it over here as well. And I can reformat. And for the register form is member form. So we name it as member form. And here we have member form as well. So if the form was submitted and the password has min length or max length error, then we display the following. And after my span, I'm going to have a div. So I have a div inside my password. I'm still inside my password. So inside the password, after the span, I'm going to have another div. And then I have asterisk ng if. If it is for editing, so I have a question mark add new. So if add new was false, that means we are editing. And we are going to display the following message for the admin. So we have a span. And inside the span we can have note column and then after my span i can have if you don't then if this is for editing then we can say note if you don't intend to change the member password then leave the password field empty and that's exactly the same approach we have done inside our api and let's create our buttons for creating or updating member and back to list so after my password form floating, I'm going to have the following HTML tags. So I have a div row margin y4, then I have div call 6, and inside my call 6, we have a degree and the button. And for here, if we are adding a new member, so we display create, otherwise we display update. So our button value will be either create member or update member. And then we have another button for back to list and we are going to navigate back to the admin. So let's try what we have so far. I'm going to save all. And then I open note, then we don't have any error message. Then I head back to my browser and I'm going to edit a member. So if I click edit, then I can see not found. 
that means we have done something wrong inside our routing so if i open my visual studio code and then i head to admin routing module so the routing is fine but if i go back to admin.component.html then so the route for create member is correct but if i scroll down then inside my edit we have a mistake over here so this is add so for edit we have forward slash admin forward slash add dash edit dash member forward slash member id so if i save and then i head back so i click on admin once again and i edit for player at example.com so we can see the form and this is the password and we have first name last name and username so we don't see those placeholders so that means we have done something else wrong so if i open digital studio code and then if i scroll up then we have form signing so i have put an extra g so this should be form dash signing and then i forgot to put label for each one of my input so after the input i'm going to have label and four is first name and then inside my label we have first name then i'm going to copy this label and i paste it for my last name and this should be last name and four is the last name and then i paste it for username so this is username with capital n and this is username and as well as for password so i paste it for password as well and this is password and inside label we have password and i'm going to alt ship f in order to format and then i save and if i head back then i can see the placeholder so we have first name last name username and password and we have back to list and update member so if i click on back to list then i can get back to the member list and if i click on create member then we have an empty form and we don't see that note message over here okay i head back to visual studio code and then i'm going to open register.component.html and just underneath we are going to have this div tag for error messages so i copy this and i paste it inside my add edit member.component.html and just underneath of underneath of my last input just before member back to list just above here i'm going to paste that over here and then i'm going to click on add edit member.component.ts and inside submit i'm going to have this that submitted is true then i'm going to have this that error messages is empty error message then i'm going to have if this dot member form dot valid and then if the form is valid then i'm going to have console.log and i just put okay here so that means the form is valid and i'm going to save and let's try creating a member so if i hit create then i can see first name is required last name is required username and password is required and if i put some characters for password i can see password must be at least 6 and 15 characters but for the rest as soon as i put some characters then the error goes away and for the password if i put six characters then the error goes away and if i display my console and if i hit create member then i don't see this okay so let's find out why we don't see that so if i do console.log and this dot member form i'm going to console like my member form and if i save and then if i put random characters and i put six characters inside password and if i create then let's examine what we have inside here so we have roles and it is expecting to receive a role but since we have determined that roles is required but we don't pass the roles so for now i'm going to comment out roles for both edit and create because we are going to handle roles very soon but for now let's comment out roles and if i navigate back and then i put some random characters and if i create then i can see okay over here but if i go back to my admin and if i try to edit and i'm going to close my console for the password it has to be validated if the admin has put some characters inside here so if i put for example a and if i open my console log and if i update then right now i can see okay for here because we don't have any validation for the password 
but this is incorrect we have to give a dynamic validation for password if the input for the password was changed so let's handle that right now so if i open add edit component and then just right underneath my initialize form i'm going to have password unchanged and then and this password unchanged will be called whenever the input value for the password has been changed so I copy the name and I head to add edit member.component.html and then I'm going to find password. So for my password and inside the input, we are going to have another event handler. So we have parentheses and change. So I select change and then for the change, we are going to call password unchange the method that we created. So for any change of this input, we are going to call this function. And then I head back to the TS file and inside password unchange, I'm going to have if this dot member form dot get and we are interested in password, then dot value. If it has some value inside here, then if the member that get password has some value inside here then we are going to set these two validators for our password so we can have this dot member form dot controls and then we are interested in password then i can have dot set validators so i select set validators and inside parentheses i have a bracket and i'm going to copy this and i paste it down here so if the password has some value so let me I minimize here so if the password has some value then we are going to set the following validators inside our password field inside our member form and I put a semicolon then we can have else then we can say this dot member form dot get password dot clear validators and we are going to remove the validators and after here we can say this dot member form that controls and password and then inside single quotation we can say password dot update value and validity and i put a semicolon and just above everything let's have another if statement so i can have if add new is false so we are going to apply the following conditions if we are editing a member not for creating a member so for creating a member we have the following validations so we don't want to touch that so let's try this i'm going to save all and then i head back to my browser and inside here i'm going to update so I have all the first name, last name, username and empty password. So this is valid. And if I hit update, then I can see, okay. But as soon as I put a character and if I click update, then I can see password must be at least six and maximum 15 characters. And if I satisfy the password, so I put six characters. And then if I click update, then I can see, okay, one more time. That means the validation for the password has been done automatically based on whether we have input inside our password or we don't have any value inside our password field. Okay, I'm going to open Visual Studio Code and I'm going to remove this console log that was for demo purpose. And let's handle roles. So I'm going to uncomment roles for both edit and create member form. And just above my initialize form, I'm going to have get roles. And we are going to call our API in order to fetch the roles from the endpoint that we have created. So I'm going to have this admin service dot get application roles and we are going to subscribe and inside subscription we have next and we are receiving roles and we can say this application roles equals to roles and i can put a semicolon over here and for the roles we are going to have checkboxes so the admin can select either one or multiple checkboxes for the roles in order to assign a user a role or multiple roles so I head back to add edit member dot component document and after my password, then I'm going to have the following div. So I have div dot row, then I have div dot call to, and inside here we have label, and for four we have roles, and here we have roles column, and after div call to we have another div of call ten. Then we have div dot btn group, and inside here. We are going to have a ng container so i have ng container 
and I close this and I hit enter and then inside the ng container I'm going to have asterisk ng4 let role of application roles then I'm going to have input and type is checkbox then class is btn check id is double curl brace role and for change we are going to call role on change and we are passing the role then we have checked and we can have existing member roles that includes role and we can have bracket class dot is dash invalid equals submitted double ampersand member form dot get roles so inside single quotation we have roles and then so i select errors and we have to put a question mark and i close my input so this is our input for roles and we are going to create role on change and as well as existing member roles and after my input i'm going to have a label and class is btn btn outline primary and four is role and i close and we have role over here as well then this is my if section for roles so we have a label roles and inside call 10 we are going to display multiple checkboxes and we are using from btn group and btn check and we are going to display the application roles and we are going to check if the existing member roles includes the role and for any input change we are going to call a role and change so i head back to add edit member that component that yes. then inside my initialize form inside if member so under here we have this dot existing member roles equals member that role that is split by comma so we have existing member roles already but we need to create a role on change so i copy this and I head back to the TS and I'm going to paste it just underneath of password and change. So if I paste it over here and then inside here, I have let roles equals this dot member form dot get roles. And then we have dot value and then dot split split by comma. Then we have cons index is roles dot index of then we have selected role so we have to bring selected roles inside our role on change so we have selected role and the type is a string so we are going to get the index of selected roles then we can say index is not equals minus one if that's the case then role roles dot splice and then we can have index and one otherwise we can have roles that push selected role and then we can have if roles index of zero is empty then we have roles that splice and we are splicing the first element by one and after here we can have this dot member form dot controls and we are going to get the roles and then we can have set value and we are going to pass roles that join and join them all by comma and then I head to the top and inside my ng on init and after here I'm going to have this dot get roles so we are going to call the get roles the method that we have created and if I save all and I head back to the browser so I'm going to close the console then we can see three roles and these are our checkbox so we can select or deselect and let's understand what we have done over here so i head back to the add edit component that yes so first of all we are fetching the id and if the id was provided then we are going to get a member and inside get member we are going to initialize the form but for else we are going to initialize the form by undefined and then we are going to call this dot get roles and this dot get roles is going to call the admin service and get application roles and this is going to be an api call and we are fetching all the roles and we are initializing our application roles to roles and if i open add edit member dot component of html and this is our role section and this is the label and then inside here we are going to look through all the application roles that we have and for each 
iteration we are going to display an input and a label so the, our input is checkbox btn check the id is role and for any changes happen to each individual input we are going to call role on change and we are going to check that checkbox if existing member roles that includes the role that we have inside each iteration so that's why we can see player checked over here so if i refresh i can see player because our player has the role of player and for any role unchanged then i go to the definition so for any role unchanged we are receiving the role and then we are going to split the roles because i said these roles inside our form is a single string so we are going to split that by comma and then we are going to get the index of the selected roles if that index is not negative one then we are going to splice that index by one otherwise we are going to push to that index so let's understand what we are trying to do over here so i'm going to have console.log roles inside here and then i'm going to have console.log index and then i'm also going to console.log this.member form.get and roles dot value so i have one console like for roles and one console like for index and another console like for this.member form.get roles dot value and if i save and i head back to the browser and i open my console and if i deselect player then i can see the empty string for this.member.get roles so we have empty for now and if i select player so i have the array is empty but before the array was a single value and that's why we, we could see the index of that single value so the single value was at index of zero that's how we could splice and remove that from that rows otherwise we are going to push it to the rows and if i select another so inside my role input i have player comma manager that's how we can comma separate it but the index was minus one so if the index is minus one then we are going to push to the array so that's why we can see roles that push but if the index is not minus one then we are removing from the row so if i deselect manager so the index was one and that's how we are removing from the array and i can also check all of them so uh, my role input has the following values player comma admin comma manager and that's how we want to be passed to the api call for add or edit member so i head back to visual studio code and i'm going to remove all of the console log that i have already here If I deselect all of the roles and if I hit update, then we don't see any error message over here. So we need to handle that as well. So I'm going to head back to added member component.html and after my div row for the roles, I'm going to have another div. So I have div.text danger and inside here we have asterisk ng if and we can check for if the form is submitted and double ampersand member or dot get and inside quotation we have roles dot has error and if the error is required so i select require and i need to put question mark over here uh, we can have if the form is submitted and member form dot get role has error of required if so then we can say please so we can say please select at least one role so i'm going to save all and i head back to the browser and if i deselect player and if i click update then i can see please select at least one role so we have handled the validation for role as well okay let's finish submission for add edit member so if i go back to add edit member .component .cs, and inside my submit then if the member form is valid then i'm going to call this dot admin service dot add edit member and we can pass the this dot member form dot value so we pass all the values and then we subscribe and inside next 
we are going to receive a response of type any and then we can have this dot shared service dot show notification and we are displaying a success message and we have response of value dot title and for the message we have response dot value dot message and then we can navigate the admin back to the admin page so we can have this dot router dot navigate by url and navigate to the forward slash admin and for any error message so i have comma enter error of error then i have query brace and i'm going to borrow another course from register.component.ts so i open that and inside register i'm going to copy this so I copy this if a statement and else, then I head back to add edit member component and I paste it over here. And I'm going to save all the files. So let's edit a member. So first of all, I click on admin, then I'm going to click on edit a player. So if I click on edit a player, then I'm going to give my player two more roles. So I hit update, then I can see player at example has been updated and if i see i can see player at example.com has the roles of admin manager and player i'm going to create a member so i hit create and i'm going to fill up the form so peter has the role of manager and player and if i hit create member then i can see peter at example com has been created so inside a second browser so i open in a separate browser so at first browser i have been logged in with the admin and inside my second browser i'm going to log in with the one that i created so i have peter at example.com and i put the password and if i hit login then we can log in to the peter account so that's working and i'm going to lock the peter so if i hit lock then peter has been locked and inside here if i try to log out and log in back then if i click login then i can see your account has been locked you should wait up till this time to be able to log in so i'm going to open my first browser and i'm going to unlock peter so in this case i can log in so i can see hi peter and everything is working as expected but there is a problem and that problem is going to be your assignment so i would like to discuss this problem in the next video so before introducing the problem let's quickly solve an existing ui issue so if i resize the browser and if i click the hamburger button then this doesn't work so we can easily fix this if i navigate back to the visual studio code and if i open navbar and inside my navbar.component.ts then i'm going to have collapse equals true so i have the following property and then i'm going to have toggle collapse and inside this i can say this dot collapse is the opposite of this dot collapse and if i open navbar.component.html then i scroll to the top so inside my navbar toggle i'm going to have a click event and i can have toggle collapse and then i'm going to add another class to my div tag so inside here i'm going to have bracket ng class and inside here i have curl brace and we are going to provide collapse class if the collapse is true so if this collapse is true then we are adding collapse class into our this class so with this, if I save all and if I navigate back to the browser, so if I click on the hamburger button, so we can see this is on collapse. And if I hit one more time, then this is going to be collapse. So this hamburger button is now working for mobile devices. Okay. I hope you were able to do something or at least try your best to handle this situation but let's try to solve this issue together so first of all when the user is trying to refresh and the very first method that gets called is inside app.component.ts so i'm going to close all and i'm going to minimize everything as well so over here we are going to have app.component.ts and that's the very first thing that 
this gets called inside our ng on init so inside this refresh user we are going to fetch the jwt and then we are going to call refresh user so if i go to the definition then inside refresh user we are going to call refresh user token and we are going to pass the jwt along with the header we are going to send to the api so inside our refresh dash user dash token we need to handle that situation and we can easily handle that by using a user manager method so if i open visual studio and then i'm going to stop the application and i'm going to close all the tabs as well and then i open account controller and inside account controller this is refresh user token so in here we can handle that situation so we can have if await underscore user manager that is locked out async and we can pass the user so this user manager method is going to returns a flag indicating whether the specified user is locked out if so then we can return unauthorized and inside unauthorized we can say you have been locked out and I can run my API application and we have to do another thing inside our Visual Studio code. So if I open that and inside my app.component.ts, so if we receive error, so inside our error conditions, then we can display the message. So in order to display the message, we need to inject shared service. So I can have private shared service of type shared service and then inside here i can have this dot shared service dot show notification false and as a title we can say account block and as a message we can pass error dot error so for the error instead of underscore we are going to have error and if i save and let's try what we have so far so right now i can see you have been locked out and that's the reason because we have locked the peter so if i click ok and the user has been logged out so if i unlock peter and i try to log in with peter okay i can see hi peter but as soon as i lock the peter and if peter tries to refresh then i can see you have been locked out so that was the end of this section let's commit our changes so i open visual studio and i stop the application then inside git changes i'm going to have the following message so i have type session 10 client app dash admin feature so i commit r and i'm going to push to github okay it's time to publish our application but before that we need to prepare our angular application and do some stuff so I open Visual Studio Code and first of all, I'm going to add the following. So inside my app.component.ts, I open this and then after here, I'm going to have if error.status equals 401, then we would like to display show notification account block. So otherwise, we don't want to display that. So that's the first thing I would like to do. And then I would like to add some modification to my environments. So I open environments.development.ts and inside my app URL, I'm going to have forward slash API forward slash. So we are going to add this into our app URL for environment.development.ts. Then I open environment.ts and for app URL, I'm going to have API forward slash. And I'm going to save all. Then I would like to rename environment.ts to environment.prod.ts. So I right click on here and then I select rename and then I name it as environment.prod.ts. And I would like to rename environment.development.ts to environment.ts. So I select this one and I hit rename and then I'm going to remove development. So we have environment.ts. And our environment.ts is the development, but environment.prod.ts is the production. Then we are having some errors. So we need to fix those errors. So if I open play service, and then I'm going to remove this, my environment, and then I control dot over here, and I'm going to import from src environments forward slash environment. And I would like to do the same for my admin service. So I remove this one. And then 
I control that over here and I add the import from environments forward slash environment and I do the same for the account service so I remove this and then I'm going to bring from here and then I'm going to save all and we still have some errors so let's restart our angular application so I do control C and then I do ng serve dash O okay when I do this I can see another error message so I'm going to open angular.json and then inside my angular.json inside development you need to cut this file and then I'm going to remove the extra line and I remove the comma and then just above here you have a production and underneath the curly brace so after this comma and I hit enter and I paste that and after here we are going to have a comma um the replace is fine but width should be src forward slash environments forward slash environment dot prod so i choose prod and then i'm going to save my angular.json and once i save my angular.json then i try to do ng serve dash o Okay, my application is up and running, but we need to do some substitution inside our services. So if I head back to Visual Studio Code, so if I open environment.ts, then we have added forward slash API forward slash. So we need to fix this issue inside our any of our services. So if, for example, if I open account service, then we have an extra forward slash API forward slash. So we need to fix this in order to fix this issue inside our entire application so if i right click on app so make sure to right click on app over here and then inside find in folder select this one and then inside here you can type forward slash api forward slash then this gives you all the forward slash api that you are using inside in your entire application and then inside replace you can replace with nothing because that part was being taken care inside our environment.ts so for this I select replace all so on the right hand you have replace all and we are going to have seven results in this case and if I hit replace all then it is going to ask replace 17 occurrence across three files so I select replace and then all the uh, files has been modified so for example, inside my account service, I have environment.app URL, then account forward slash uh, refresh user token. And our app URL is containing, so if I open environment.ts, our app URL is containing that forward slash that we used to put inside our each individual API calls. So that's been taken care of. So that was the first thing that we wanted to do before creating a production build of our angular and the other one is if i open angular.json then if i scroll to the top we are going to display what is the output pass so if i find output pass that's just underneath of options we have output path and in here i'm going to remove this then we are going to have dot dot forward slash API with capital A forward slash www root and that's the path that we want our angular production build to be stored in and then I scroll down to the budget so inside my production and inside budget then I'm going to replace maximum warning to 1 MB and maximum error to 2 MB so I'm going to save my angular.json and then I stop the Angular application and I'm going to hit ng build. So with ng build, we are going to make a production of our Angular application. And if I hit enter, then this is going to create www root folder inside our API application. So if I navigate to my Visual Studio and then if I observe my solution explorer, then I'm going to see a www root. Once that production build has been generated so it is generating browser application bundles and at this time and we have seen that the bundle has been created so if i navigate back then i can see www root inside my api application and we are going to serve our angular application using our api application in order to 
deploy to Azure. And then I'm going to open program.cs. And if I scroll to the bottom, so we need to apply two more pipelines. So just after app use authorization, I hit enter. And then I'm going to have app.use default files. And then I'm going to have app.use static files. And after my app.map controllers, then I'm going to have app.map fallback to controller. So I select this one, app map fallback to controller. And as the first argument, I'm going to have index with capital I, then comma, and then I have fallback. I put semicolon. And then I'm going to open my controllers. And then I'm going to add a new controller. So I select add controller. And this time I'm going to make a use of MVC controller and I select MVC controller empty. Then I hit add and I'm going to name it as, so I remove home and then I name it as fallback. And I hit add. Then instead of view, I'm going to remove view and instead I'm going to have return physical file. So I select physical file and inside the parentheses, I'm going to have path. So I need to bring pass from system.io. So I select this and then I have dot combine. I select combine and then I have a parenthesis. And then inside here I have directory dot get current directory. And then I added parenthesis and I have comma. And after here I have www root and then I have another comma then I have index.html and after this parenthesis I have comma and then I have text forward slash html so that's the path that we are going to get our index.html and if I open www root so this is the production build of our angular and we have index.html so if I open index.html this is the production build that angular has given us inside this www root folder and we are going to serve our angular from this folder and inside my fallback controller we are going to tell that take the index.html from this path and if i open program.cs then we have added these two pipelines the first one is app use default files so this is going to look for index.html and is going to serve the API application using that index.html. So the first pipeline is going to look for the index.html and then use a static files. We have added use a static files because we are using a static files. And inside my www root, we are having some static files. So all of these, all of these files are static files. That's why we have added app.use static files and we are going to tell app.map fallback to controller so whenever we are trying to refresh the page we are going to call map fallback to controller and inside map fallback to controller we are going to tell find the index action from fallback controller so that's what we have so we have created a fallback controller and this is the index action and inside the index action, we are going to tell get the index.html from www root. And the format is text forward slash HTML. So I would like to test my API application. So if I run my API application, then I'm going to navigate to my API application inside my browser. So in order to do that, I'm going to open my properties, launch settings.json. Then I take the application URL of my API. So I copy this and then inside the browser. So this is for localhost 4200, but we don't need this. So I'm going to open a new browser and then I paste that URL. So if I hit enter, then we are going to see the same application, but this time we are using from the API. And this is the URL of our API application. So if I click login, and if I try to log in as admin, then I can see everything is working as it used to be. But instead we are serving a production build of our Angular application and we are serving that from the API application. Okay, let's log into Azure portal and let's create our database inside our Azure portal. So I'm going to close all the tabs and then I open a new tab and inside Google, 
I search for Azure portal login. So first of all, you need to create yourself an Azure account, but I already have an Azure account. So that's a prerequisite for this course. So if I open the first link, so if you're new to Azure, you need to create yourself a free account and you get some bonus dollar for the first year. So if I click on free account and if I open this one, then you're getting some free services for the first 12 months. But after that, you are going to be charged. So I already have an account. So I click on sign in. And once you have been logged into your portal Azure, then we are going to create a resource group. So I click on resource group and inside here, I'm going to hit plus create. Then you have to select a subscription. So I have Azure subscription and then inside resource group, I'm going to have identity app resource. So I have named as identity app resource and a resource is basically like a folder. So we are creating a folder and we would like to add our SQL server and web application into our this identity app resource. Then I hit review plus create and I hit create. So my resource has been created and I can see identity app resource over here. So if I select home, then inside resource groups, you can see your resource group that you created. So you can select on identity app resource and inside here you can click on create. Then I search for SQL and I hit enter. Then you select Azure SQL, so the first one, and you can hit create. And inside here, we are going to create SQL Server single database. So I hit create and we are going to create our SQL database. So first of all, we need to choose our subscription and then we are going to choose our resource group. So I have selected my resource group that I have created, Identity App Resource. And then we are going to give our database a name. So I name it as Identity App DB. And then we are going to create a server for our database. So I select create new and inside here, I'm going to give it a server name. So I have chosen identity app server and the location I'm going to select US East. And inside here, I select use SQL authentication. So I select use SQL authentication and we are going to create the admin user account for our SQL server. So as the admin username, I'm going to have admin user and then as a password. And then I confirm the password. So make sure to write your username and password somewhere so you don't forget. And then once you have done that, click on OK. Then I'm going to choose the plan. So inside configure database, I select this one. And by default, it has selected some of the most budget friendly server as compute, but this is too costly. So we are going to pay $372 per month if we are going to choose this one. But for sure, we would like to have the cheapest option. So I select the drop down and I'm going to choose basic. So I choose basic from here. And then the price has dropped to $5 per month. So this is going to calculate it daily. So don't worry if you have created your SQL server and you are going to test your application using SQL server. And once you have tested your SQL server and then after like five or 10 days, you would like to delete your SQL server, then you are going to be charged only one or $2. So this is an estimate for if you're using four per month, but this is going to be charged daily. Then click on apply and I'm going to hit review plus create and I click on create once again. So it is going to create my database and initialize my database. So it takes a while. Okay, I can see your deployment is complete. So I can click on go to resource and then I'll be navigated to my identity app DB. But for example, if you're lost, then for example, I navigate back to my home and inside my resource group, I'm going to select my resource group. And inside here, I can see identity app DB. And one of them is identity app server. So I select identity app DB. And we are going to set our server firewall. So I select set server firewall and I select selected network. 
and in here click on add your client ipv4 address once you select and you need to give your router ip address over here so if i go back to google and if i type for my ip address then you can see what's my ip address and this is your router ip address so you can copy this and then if you head back to your azure portal and you can paste it over here and you can paste into the two columns and then after here you click on save and you can click on the bell icon so and you can see updating server public network access and you need to wait until you see successfully updated server firewall rules then you can go back to the identity app db so i select this and i'm going to copy my server name into my clipboard so i copy the server name into my clipboard and then i open my sql server management and you can click on connect and inside here you can paste that server name and inside authentication just uh, from the drop down you can select from sql server authentication and you can put the username and password that you whenever you were creating your user account and i hit connect so i have been connected to my azure sql server so if i open my database i can see identity app db over here but if i open tables and inside here we are going to let the entity framework to create our tables inside our azure sql server so in order to do that i head back to the browser and then inside my identity app db i can have a connection string so if i click on show database connection strings the bottom one is my connection string so i copy to my clipboard and then i open visual studio and i'm going to stop the application and i'm going to open app settings.development.json and we are going to have another default connection so i put comma and then inside here i'm going to have default connection then i put Colon, and inside the quotation i'm going to paste that connection string that i copied from azure and inside password i can see your password so you have to put your exact password over here so this is my password so if i scroll to the left then i'm going to comment out the first default connection so the first one is going to connect to my local host but i would like to connect to my azure sql server so i comment the first default connection and then we are going to be connected to our azure sql server so if i start my api application and then i'm going to watch this so we are basically modifying our azure database and we are creating the tables and we are seeding to those tables based on what we have done for our local host so if I open my SQL Server Management and inside tables, I'm going to refresh. So once I refresh, then so the magic has done its job and we can see all the tables over here. And if I select top thousand from ASP.NET users, so I can see all the users that we were seeding to our database. So I can open my API URL. So if I open the Visual Studio and then inside launch settings i'm going to copy this link this is my api url and inside the browser i'm going to paste it over here and i can see hi admin so if i log out and log in then i'm going to have admin at example.com i put the password then we have been logged in as admin using azure sql server instead of localhost sql server and if i click admin then we can see no members and we have a problem over here and we are going to fix this issue in the next video okay so far everything is working and we are connecting to azure sql server but the problem is we don't see any members and if i open visual studio and then i open admin controller and then if i scroll down and i'm going to put a breakpoint over here and if i refresh my browser then I will be get caught inside my breakpoint. And if I step over, and if I step over one more time, then this has thrown some exception. And the problem is from here. So for some reason, Azure SQL Server doesn't like using get awaiter get result inside our dot select. So we have to refactor this code. So I stop the API application and I remove my breakpoint. Then I'm going to comment out this part. 
and at the top i'm going to have list of member view dto and i name it as members equals new list member view dto and then i'm going to have var users equals await user manager dot users dot where and x goes to x dot username is not st dot admin user and then we have dot to list async so i select this one and i can bring down dot where and i can bring down dot to list async and i put extra line over here and then inside here i'm going to iterate through my users and populate my members based on that iteration so i have for each var user in users then i'm going to have var member member to add is new member view dto so i select this one and then i have curly brace and inside curly brace so i put enter and i'm going to have id equals user.id and i have username equals user.username and then i have first name equals user.firstname and last name equals user.lastname and then i'm going to have date created equals user.date created and i have comma then i can have is locked equals await underscore user manager and if i score down we are going to use dot is locked out async and we are going to pass a user and then i have roles equals await user manager dot get roles and we pass the user and after we have member to add then we are going to have members dot add and we are going to pass member to add so for now we have refactor our get members endpoint and we have refactor from here to here and let's try if we are going to see the proper result inside our admin panel so if i run my api application and i'm still using the azure connection string and if i open my browser and inside admin panel i try to refresh and then I can see the admin panel is working and I can see the roles and players. So, so if I head back to the Visual Studio and I open admin controller, so this was the problem. And we fixed that by refactoring the code. And we are going to do the same for get member. So I stop the API application. And inside here, I'm going to have var user equals await user manager dot users dot where and x goes to x dot username is not st dot admin username and i have double ampersand x dot id equals to id and we have dot first or default async so i select this one and i'm going to put where inside a new line and as well as first or default async inside a new line then i'm going to comment out var member and just here we are going to have var member equals new member at edit dto so i select this one and i put enter and we are going to have a curly brace and we can put enter and then inside the curly brace we have id equals user dot id username equals user dot username and first name equals first name user dot first name and last name equals user dot last name and then we are going to have roles and for the roles we have so i can copy this so if i copy this and i paste it over here but instead we are going to make a use of await so i can have await user manager dot get roles async and for the m we are going to pass a user so i remove m and i put user and then i'm going to get rid of dot get awaiter and dot get result so i remove all this and i put a semicolon over here and i'm going to remove the existing code that we have refactored already so i remove from get member and if i scroll to the top i'm going to remove from my get members as well and if i run my api application and i'm going to open my browser once again so i refresh and then i'm going to edit my player so if i click edit then i can see the roles are here and i can give my player manager and admin and if i hit update member then I can see player has been updated and I can see the roles for my player. But I'm going to take out the manager and admin from the player. So I deselect manager and admin and I hit update member. 
Okay, let's actually deploy our application to our Azure. So I open Visual Studio and then I stop the application and we know that that is working. So I open app settings that development and so I'm going to remove my default connection from my app settings that development .json because that was for testing and creating the tables. So I'm going to remove this. So we don't need that. I'm going to remove the extra comma over here as well. And I'm going to uncomment my default connection. So my app settings that development .json is going to hit the local host. And then I save. And then inside the solution, I'm going to right click on API and I hit publish. Then we are going to publish to Azure. So I choose the first one and I select next. Then we are going to publish to Windows. So I select the second one, Azure App Service Windows, and I choose next. Then you need to be logged in as your user account and you need to have the subscription over here. And inside here, I click on create new and then so you're going to give your website a name and this name has to be unique. So I remove the default name and I choose as identity app Udemy. So this is my website name and I choose Azure subscription, the one that I have. And inside resource group, I'm going to choose the resource group that I created. So I just select identity app resource. And for the hosting plan, I'm going to click on new. Then inside size, I'm going to select free. So we are selecting a free version for hosting our web application and you won't be charged for hosting this plan. And then I click on OK and then I hit create. So this is going to create my app service and web application. Okay, my identity app Udemy has been created. Then I can click on next and inside API management so we can skip this step. So I choose the checkbox and I click next. Then we are going to use publish generate pub XML file. So I choose the first one and I hit finish. And the publish profile has been created. So I can close and our application is ready to be published. But before that, so this is the site name of our application. And we are going to modify the app settings.json as well. So if I open app settings development .json, I'm going to copy connection string and as well as JWT. So this app settings development was for development purpose, but we are going to try inside production. So I choose app settings .json, and after here, I'm going to have some new lines and I paste those over here. So for the connection strings, we are going to have a default connection, but we have to substitute this connection string with the one that Azure has given us. So I remove all this inside the connection string. And if I navigate to the Azure portal, so I choose this one and I'm going to copy the connection string once again. So I copy this and I head back to my Visual Studio and I paste it over here. And for the password, I remove all the way from the starting curly brace to the end curly brace. So I remove that and I put the password that I'm trying to log in into Azure SQL Server. And then if I scroll to the left, then for the expires in days, I'm going to choose one because for the production, we would like the JWT to be expired in only one day. And then for the issuer and client URL, we are going to remove the two values so i remove these two and then we are going to substitute it with the azure url that we have so if i select api publish so i select this one and for the site inside here we can copy this into clipboard and i head back to the app settings.json and i paste it inside my issuer and as well as client url so my app settings.json has been completed and I can save this file. And once I save app settings at JSON, then I head back to API publish. And if I scroll to the top, then I can hit publish. And this is going to publish my application to Azure service windows. And this might take a while, so be patient. So I can see it is adding all the files and I can see publish once succeeded and it is going to install ASP.NET Core site extensions. So for the first time, it might take some time. And once uh, that is done, then I can see identity app udemy.azurewebsite.net is going to be running.
and i can see everything is up and running so let's try to log in with admin at example.com and then if i click login then i have been successfully logged in with my admin and if i click admin panel then i can see all the users over here but at first when i tried to publish my api project it was giving me some internal server error and the error was if i navigate to azure portal and inside identity app resource and if i click on identity app db it wasn't being able to connect to the azure sql server and in order to get around that so you need to click on set server firewall and then if you scroll down you can click on allow azure services and resources to access this server so you can click save and this will allow you to access to your azure sql server so i forgot to check this checkbox and that was giving me some internal server error but as soon as you do that then you can connect to the azure sql server and everything is running from my azure website okay let's create an account so i hit create an account and then i put some random name then i click on create account and i can see account created your account has been created please confirm your email address so i log in with my email address that i created my account so inside here i can click on spam so make sure to check your spam if you're not receiving inside your inbox then i can see confirm your email and I can see the email for my confirmation has been sent. Hello, Hochschelen, please confirm your email. And if I click on click here, then I can see email confirm. So I can open my SQL Server Management and I have been logging with Azure SQL Server. So I'm going to select top thousand from ASP.NET users. So if I execute, then this is the user account that I have created. And if I scroll to the right, I can see email confirm is true. So let's try to login with the email account that we have created so i'm going to click login and i put a username and password and then we were able to log in as the account that we have created so i'm going to log out and this time i'm going to create account using google and facebook but before that we need to handle and add the our azure website into google developer and facebook developer and we are going to do that in the next video Okay, let's handle sign up with Google and Facebook. So first of all, we deal with sign up with Google. So I'm going to log in inside Google Developer Console. And then I click on hamburger button and choose APIs and services and choose credentials. I'm going to select identity app and inside authorize JavaScript origins. I'm going to add the following URL. So I click add URL and then i copy and paste my azure website url so from here https all the way to net i'm going to copy and i paste it over here and i'm going to save so let's try to sign up with google so i head back to my app url so inside here i'm going to choose sign up with google then i can add my Google email address and I click next and I'm going to put a password so I click next and I have been authenticated by Google so I can see the access token and then I can put some random name so I have chose James Bond and I click create account so I can see hi James and if I log out and I log in so this time I'm going to choose sign in with Google then I select the email address that I have signed up with. So I choose this one. Then I can see hi James. And let's fix Facebook. So I'm going to log into Facebook.developers. And I choose my apps. And inside identity app. I'm going to choose Facebook login and I click on settings. And I'm going to add the same URL over here as well. So I have added my Azure website URL and I put forward slash and inside my allow domain for the JavaScript, I do the same and then I can save changes and let's sign up with Facebook. So I choose identity app and I log out. Then I hit create account and I choose Facebook.
Then once I have been logged in with Facebook, I can see Facebook access token. So I put first name and last name and I hit create account. Then I can see hi Tom. And if I examine my database, so if I execute, then I can see Tom Jerry is using the Facebook. So if I scroll to the right, we can see Facebook. But the next one, James Bond is using Google account. And if I scroll to the right, I can see the provider is Google. So if I navigate to my Facebook login, then this is going to be allowed for only the test users and the actual account that we have created for this application. But if you would like to make it accessible for public, then you need to follow some guidelines. And the guidelines has been described over here. So it can say your app has a standard access to public profile to use Facebook login, switch public profile to advanced access. And you can get some information how to do that over here. But I'm not going to cover that because that is going to require some business information that you have and the domain and address that you have for your application. And that is happening only for Facebook. But for Google, the steps that I showed you, so as long as you have your website over here inside authorized JavaScript, then everything is fine. And you can make a use of this inside your production application as well. But for Facebook, you need to follow some extra steps in order to make it profile accessible. And with all this, we have come to the end of this tutorial. So we would like to commit our changes. So I open Visual Studio and I'm going to make the following message. So I have written section 11, comma, Azure deployment. So I commit all and I'm going to push to GitHub. 